Alright, shalom everybody. Hope you're doing well. It's been about a couple of days since I've done a video. Um, it's cold out here in the Midwest, upper Midwest. So stay safe out there wherever you're at. So today I met with a former co-worker of mine. He got into cryptocurrency. Um, I, where I used to work there was a treatment facility. Aurora Pines Academy. Um, still dealing with legal issues with them, but I'll save that for another broadcast. But he's a former coworker of mine, and where I used to work at uh, Aurora Pines Academy, I used to sub, and whenever I sub, I used to tell the students, I tell them about cryptocurrency, what it is, what it's good for, um, in general overview. Overview. But being in that setting, I never told them what website I use. Um, I never disclosed to them like um, how much money I had, um, where to buy your Bitcoins. But I gave them a general overview overview, and encouraged them that, you know, when you get out of the, your treatment facility, do your own research, do your own homework, and get into it while you can. And this was when Bitcoin was around 1,000. Um, and then it slowly made its way, well, or quickly made its way in a span of, I don't know, a few days to uh, 3,000. So... This was um, all throughout last year when I sub. I left there in October. So my coworker, he was working with a residence and he heard me in one of my uh, substitution uh, days. And so he just you not know, like randomly t messaged me like last week telling me, you know, I hit the spot. I nailed, I nailed it right on when it came to a uh, Bitcoin. So I did get into it. Uh, I've been into cryptocurrency. I bought my first one in um, summer of 2016. So I've been in it for a little bit. Um, only one thing that I didn't do, which I should have, which I encourage you for you out there is to mine. All I was doing is buying, um, buying Bitcoin and alternative currency and lit leaving them in a wallet, letting it grow. So, but now I got into mining. Uh, Contracts I have it with BitClub Network, um, Genesis, and uh, Hashflare. So doing well. I'm pretty set on that. So, so I met with him and I talked with him for about a couple of hours and I showed him how to get started and showed him the steps that he really should take while he's in it. So good to hear that he's in it. Um, so as of now, I know three other people that are in that have a cryptocurrency here in the state of South Dakota so uh, myself um, one of my coworkers whom I whom I told um, the other two I think I played a role in helping them get started and then the third one he kind of heard it from somebody else as well so not a whole lot but they're slowly making in its way so oh I have an article here. This is from a USA Today. This was from last Tuesday. Let's see if I can pull it up. So, yeah. Bitcoin. No, it's kind of backwards. But it says, headlines Bitcoin from a contrarian point of view. This was from John Maxfield of the Motley Fool, if you've heard of that. So, here's a quote from the paper. The rapid rise in the price of Bitcoin this year has caused financiers to issue warnings that it may be in bubble territory. And this includes Warren Buffet, Jamie Dimon, Howard Marks, Jack Bogle. And it goes on to say, uh, Bitcoin is like a tool. It doesn't generate value. I mean, it actually does generate value. It's organic. It's more natural. It's free market. The people have chosen to use... Uh, Bitcoin as a form of making transaction and I think it tells I mean look where we're at we're about what 600 billion for the total of cryptocurrency market and at some point next year it's gonna hit over 1 trillion and as I, I I'll, I'll say it again uh, 2017 was the year of Bitcoin 2018 is gonna be the year of alternative currency they'll start to make their growing catch up to a uh, Bitcoin Bitcoin will still go up there I think it'll be over 40,000 but other currencies they're gonna hit 
the 100 mark for the lower tiered ones and they're also gonna topple uh, 1000 for um, currencies like uh, Ethereum, Dash, I look for Monero to get closer. I've always seen Dash and Monero and Zcash should be like hand in hand or one ghost, either one shouldn't be too far behind but all three of them will all catch up along with Ethereum. Uh, Litecoin will go over, I, th I believe it's gonna go over a thousand in uh, 2018. So 2018 will be a very exciting year. So invest in it, try out some of your fiat currency for uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, you really can't go wrong with uh, any of the top 10. Um, a good rule of thumb is, let's say for example, we have a thousand dollars to spend or 500, you could go 50-50 route put about 50% of it in a uh, Bitcoin and the other 50% um, in alternative currency, mostly in a uh, top 10. So the fact is uh, with Bitcoin, it's still a gold standard. And plus, if you open up any of the other um, exchanges, you would need a uh, Bitcoin to uh, to open it or exchange it. So it's, it's the main uh, form of uh, cryptocurrency. So... And I'll go 50-50 because I really believe uh, other currencies is going to do well for 2018. So, But it's up to you if you want to go 7-30 or 60-40, 70% Bitcoin, 30 in uh, cryptocurrency, feel free to do so. So that's that. Um, so I hope he's doing well. I'm trying to encourage some of my, uh, trying to encourage a couple of my sister to get started in cryptocurrency and as always, it's it's not about money. It never has been and it never will be. It's about securing your future. I mean, if you hope to someday uh, own your house, um, own your vehicle if you haven't uh, done so, um, pay for education if you choose to go to college, um, if you have kids out there, help help them with their future. You're going to need a, a way to provide for them and having money is very helpful I and mean, it doesn't give you salvation but in the world that we live in you need to be able to obtain your resources and your products and cryptocurrency it's a it's a form it's a means of uh, obtaining your wealth in return you can do things with it so what you need if you need to do is uh have some fiat currency f because you still need it to do a transaction. I mean, the world is slowly adapting to a cryptocurrency, but it's still lagging behind. So have your uh, uh, fiat currency to conduct your businesses. Um, get invested into cryptocurrency. It's going to make waves in 2018. And if you haven't done so, get into gold and silver because gold and silver will increase in 2018. Why? Well, look what China and Russia are doing. They have been buying tonnage of gold over the years and over a cent over a decades and uh, they've been planning this well ahead of time um, if a country ever officially backs up their currency with gold and or silver it won't be long till the other countries start to uh, follow the same route now with Trump announcing that he's gonna that he recognized Jerusalem as Israel's uh, capital which it should have been from the get-go I know the Philippines and Czech followed suit well look for it that other countries are gonna follow suit as well and those that are denying at some point they're gonna have to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and the Jewish people so I read a very interesting article interesting to note I first heard about this through Karen Hudis and this was pertaining to gold and the Philippines and I was born there in uh, Leyte Gulf in the Visaya in the Philippines okay so there was an empire in Southeast Asia in the Philippines and over the course of 900 years I'll just give you the gist of the of what I read um, they accumulated um, a massive amount of gold I think over time it's over 2 million metric tons of gold all right and uh, I don't know how but it, it uh, the the family at that point made a deal with the Vatican to have like 600,000 tons taken over to uh, the Vatican which that would be in Italy and and uh, 
Ferdinand Marcos, the president at that time, along with uh, um, Father um, Father Diaz, and uh, oh no, Ferdinand Marcos was the attorney overseeing the the deal. The, but they had a deal to bring that back to the Philippines. Well, I don't know, CIA and the greedy American government saw to this and wanted a, a piece of their pie unfairly. So they helped ousted a coup. If you remember, in 1986, Ferdinand Mar Marcos was ousted and a puppet president, Cory Aquino, was installed. And Ferdinand Marcos was, I believe, jailed in Hawaii. And his wife was made to look bad, Melda Marcos having like over a hundred pairs of shoes. But what you're not told, never told, was about the gold. I bet you mainstream stupidity media never said anything about that, did they? And that's what's really at the heart of uh, the coup, the CIA-led coup from the corrupt American government, was to get a piece of this gold. Now, there's all, there's thousand tonnage of gold that's unaccounted for but from my understanding there's about 400,000 in a Kuzan city back in the Philippines and what it needs to be done and it was in the will of Ferdinand Marcos was the gold be given to the Filipino people which rightfully it should go um, if this were to happen it would make um, the Philippines a very wealthy country um, and then the Filipinos to be among the wealthiest, maybe perhaps the wealthiest people in the world. So and the article even stated that about a week after the 9-11 attack, um, during an interview, President Bush was asked, which is the richest country in the world? And with a smile, he answered the Philippines. So interesting to note, um, you should look it up, do your own research. Um, Karen Hudis, she's a she's a Jewish banker. She uh, worked in the Philippines um, for a while, so she knows firsthand about this story. It's actually the first that I heard about it was through her when I was listening to her on YouTube, and she had also worked on Yemen. So interestingly enough, my two ancestral side, Philippines and Yemen, she's worked in both. So, but for me, third all. Israel is dear to my heart. It's eventually where, 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 where I will call home. But with cryptocurrency and hopefully the um, market affiliate will go through for me. I'm hoping to build a house in the Philippines and in Israel. So, and maybe this house I could also rent out. So, who knows? That's something I'm really excited about where this all goes. So, to close it up, Always keep God at the forefront of your heart. He knows what you're going through. He's going to take care of you. But do your part. Trust God. He's got a wonderful plan for you. In, in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah and the Tanakh, Old Testament, He has plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So believe in Yeshua, the Son of God, the Jewish Messiah. He is salvation. He is the only way through God. So believe in Yeshua with all your heart, mind, and soul, okay? And back up your faith with your actions. So shalom, good night, um, Lailatov, and I'll uh, hear from you. See me again in my next uh, broadcast. All right, peace.